Hi, and welcome to another episode of David Rides a Trike. I'm David, and I'm riding a trike. I try to provide a little motivation for or to people with chronic illnesses and disabilities to get outside and find some fun form of exercise because doing so can prove to be therapeutic and it usually turns out to be fun. Personally, I fall into both the chronically ill and disabled categories. I was diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic when I was a year and a half old, although I'm no longer a diabetic thanks to a pancreas transplant when I was 41 years old. I've had three organ transplants total. I've had stage 3 cancer. I am legally blind. And I've had a bunch of illnesses, infections, and other maladies that have almost done me in, but so far none have. So speaking of transplants, this week marks my eight-year kidney transplant anniversary, or transplant -versary. Yeah! Hello. I was up in Madison, Wisconsin this week, which is my transplant center for my annual checkup. And all transplanted organs are functioning as they should, so that was really good news. For those of you who don't know the story, I'll give it to you briefly. I was diagnosed with end-stage renal disease, or ESRD, which is basically kidney failure, when I did the blood test as part of applying for my marriage license when I was 27. So that was a fine how do you do, as they say. I was applying for my marriage license, found out my kidneys were about to fail me. Luckily for me, my sister Judy insisted on donating a kidney. She turned out to be a match, and I had that transplant done. And that kidney lasted until I was, or it lasted until 2010, when it unfortunately finally bit the dust. So I was on dialysis, and while I was on dialysis, I worked really hard to try and find a living kidney donor. The reason I wanted a living donor was twofold. For one, living donor kidney transplants typically last about twice as long as deceased donor kidneys. And the other thing is that living kidney donor transplants start working immediately, whereas, sorry, I'm going uphill here, so if I'm huffing and puffing, that's why. And this is a, it's always a sandy section of the trail. I don't know why it's like that year after year. Um, the other reason I wanted a living donor is because they start working right away. I said that, didn't I? So, what finally got me that kidney was I put a video together, and it wasn't your typical, hi, I'm David and I need a kidney video. It was a little different, and I think because of that, it caught the eye of one of the local news channels here, got aired on the news, and a very short time later, I was contacted, contacted by a woman named Patty, thank you Patty, who wanted to donate. She was not a match, but we got into what's called a paired donation, or kidney chain. One more uphill here. And on 
May 30th of 2013, Hattie donated her kidney and it was sent to someone who needed it in Cincinnati. And in return, I received a kidney from John, who lives out in Reading, Pennsylvania. So thank you, John. So, uh, kidney is still working beautifully eight years later. And again, thanks to my sister Judy, Patty, and John. What does all of this mean to you? Well, I'd like to urge you all to become organ donors should something happen to you. It's very easy to do. Simply go to organdonor.gov. I'll provide the link down in the description as well and sign up. It's all there is to it. Or if you would consider becoming a living kidney donor. Currently, there are 93,000 people in the U.S. alone needing a kidney transplant and waiting for a donor. If you're interested in becoming a living donor, go to the Living Kidney Donors Network Dot org or lkdn.org and again all these links will be down below to get information about becoming a living kidney donor and whether it's directed meaning it's for somebody you know or non-directed which means you're just donating to whoever is the best match uh, it, it will change somebody's life incredibly very good chance it'll save their life so yeah um, the other thing I want to mention which really has uh, not a lot to do with organ donation or kidney transplants is that things are now loosening up in the US as far as masking and social distancing and that's great if you're vaccinated, you can be out in public or wherever and not wear a mask. But there's a group of people, myself included, transplant recipients, for whom the vaccine doesn't look like it works very well. And we've been told to continue living as if we're not vaccinated. So with a lot of people going around now not wearing masks, we're at greater danger. And I would like to just ask people, if you're in a public place, yes, you will be perfectly fine going without a mask. But if someone like me or one of the transplant recipients I know, or quite possibly, people with autoimmune diseases or are taking other immunosuppressive drugs, they're not necessarily so safe. So if you could make the sacrifice of putting a mask on when you're indoors, especially around people you don't know, you could be saving someone's life. And yes, it is a sacrifice, but after all, it's not like I'm asking you to donate a kidney or anything. That's it for this episode. Please like, comment down below and give it a thumbs up and I will see you on the next ride. Bye-bye.